band needs no introduction at all. They've been metal legends for the past 30 odd years. This is uh, my review of Iron Maiden's 15th release, The Final Frontier. I bought the Mission Edition. Uh, I'll get to details on the Mission Edition a little bit later in the uh, review. What you got on the inside? You got your booklet disc. Uh, I'll get on to my uh, full concerns with the Mission Edition a bit later. Uh, tracks, you got ten tracks. Um, most of them are over five minutes long. Expect to uh, sit around for a little while listening to this. It's close to around 80 minutes. Uh, you have Satellite 15, The Final Frontier, El Dorado, Mother of Mercy, Coming Home, The Alchemist, Isle of Avalon, Starblind, The Talisman, The Man Who Would Be King, and When the Wild Wind Blows. Uh, most of us have already heard El Dorado. Uh, no reason for me to go over that. It's, it's solid single, your typical Iron Maiden single. Um, Satellite 15 opens with a uh, not something that you normally see with Maiden. It's like a uh, spacey kind of thing, a uh, little synth bass kind of thing going on. And Bruce's voice sounds a little weird, but not weird in a bad way, weird in this really cool way. Uh, Final Frontier, um, most of us have already seen the music video for that, straight up rock song, typical Maiden. Uh, Dave and Adrian and Yannick going at it in that song. Uh, Mother of Mercy raises a bit of concern for me. Bruce's voice seems to be a bit strained on Mother of Mercy. It's not like a, uh, it's like a, he was being pushed a little too hard. Uh, I don't know whose fault they may be. That may be uh, Kevin Shirley's fault. It may be Steve's fault. It may even be Bruce's own fault. He tried to push himself too hard. Uh, coming home, it's like your, uh, it's kind of like your power ballad, I guess. Uh, really no other way to describe it. It's I consider it a filler on the album. The Alchemist, I sounds the beat follows Aces High. Uh, really nothing special there. After the Alchemist is where we start to get into uh, my opinion the great parts of the album, the uh, stuff that really stands out, and hopefully they will play live. Uh, a lot of these songs, um, I think, will be some. Uh, some of the included on some of their uh, after the retired greatest hits albums. Uh, you got Isle of Avalon. Um, guessing that's a uh, sort of a uh, Merlin reference, Legend of Merlin. Um, Starblind is my favorite track on the album. It's got this. Uh, you can definitely tell that Adrian was uh, had his hands on this one. It's 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 one of those songs that it, once you hear it, it will get stuck in your head. So if if you're one of those people that catches uh, other people catch you like singing along to stuff randomly in the middle of the day, Starblind is one of those songs. The Talisman, um, incredibly fast paced. Um, it's, a, uh, it's around nine minutes long. Uh, pretty pretty long song for the uh, average music listener. Uh, most music listeners, once they see uh, anything over five minutes, they immediately disregard it, but uh, all around a great track. The Man Who Would Be King is my second favorite off of the album. Um, definitely got that kind of sad, depressing kind of thing going on. It's like it, it's telling a story about a man who would be king. Uh, great track. Runs in in about eight and a half minutes. Hopefully they'll play uh, that one live. It'll it definitely, uh, there's a good sing-along part near the end of the thing. I can imagine fans singing along with it live with Bruce. When the Wild Wind Blows, the 11-minute long track on the album, is, uh, is probably one of the saddest songs I have ever heard in my life. Um, it's depressing in a sense that it's like it's about a nuclear holocaust. Like they, uh, it, tell, it tells a story of people who know they are doomed to die, and they wonder, well, will you know, will it ever be normal again? Will will the grass ever grow again? Will plants ever grow again? And 
it's almost like it's a swan song for Iron Maiden. If this was this, if this was their last album, "When the Wild Wind Blows" is a fitting uh, career-ending song. It's it's a very emotional song. Uh, it can bring tears to some people's eyes. Uh, definitely, a lot of people at concerts are going to be throwing up lighters to that if they ever hear it. Now, my concerns about the Mission Edition. I was a bit disappointed in the fact that uh, it comes in this cheap aluminum case, this little plastic covering right here, and it's it's just all around. It's cheap. Uh, there's nothing even visible here on the album, unless you read the fine print on the back that even says this is an Iron Maiden album. So people who look at this on the shelf don't even know what this is until they read on the back of the album. Um, right here where the uh, copyright is, Iron Maiden, LLP, under exclusive license to Universal Music Enterprises. People won't know whose album this is when they pick it up. It can be confusing to people. Now, when I bought the Mission Edition, I was expecting like a, uh, like a two-disc special edition set, maybe uh, the CD, and then the uh, maybe a making of DVD or something like that. Instead, what they did is... Um, you insert the disc into your computer, you go to the Iron Maiden's bonus content page, and it runs a uh, runs a little application on the sidebar, and it verifies your disc to see if it actually is a Mission Edition uh, uh, album. But um, the bonus features are, are lacking. Um, there's some live photos. There's a... Uh, there's an interview with the band that's, uh, the interview was conducted by the same guy who, um, did the documentary Flight 666, um, and there's some kind of game on there. The game is really, it's like something you would find on a cartoonnetwork.com or something. It's not anything special. Uh, then you have the director's cut of the final, the music video of The Final Frontier. It's the director's cut, and if you want to see it, just go on YouTube. It's all over YouTube, and there's no difference. There's really no difference between the director's cut and the cut they would show on MTV or something like that. So, uh, if you're gonna buy this album, unless you really, really, really want to play that flash game that they've got on there. I would recommend that you just buy the standard version of the album. The Mission Edition is not impressive at all. I felt disappointed. Um, they could have they could have made a making of DVD. They really could have. They've done it. They did it with Dance of Death. They did it with A Matter of Life and Death. Um, I can't remember if they did it for Brave New World, but you know, it's. I feel like this album was a bit rushed in terms of production quality. Um, excellent. Uh, Bruce's voice sounds uh, very, it's got a very natural, natural feel to it, 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 the exception being Mother of Mercy, where it sounds a bit strained. Um, Steve Harris's bass, audible as always, come to realize that with Steve, he's always got that, uh, his way with playing bass. Um, Adrian, Dave, and Yannick are phenomenal. Uh, Adrian's solos, Dave's solos, and even Yannick's solos are great. Uh, Nico's drumming is solid, you know, your normal drumming for an Iron Maiden album. Uh, in terms of the booklet, you've got uh, the artwork of the new Alien Eddie. Kind of gives me a uh, Virtual Eleven kind of feel to it. Uh, you've got some uh, lyrics, stuff like that, more artwork. The artwork inside this album is phenomenal. Uh, Right here, you, uh, I'm not sure if you'd be able to see that, but there's a man standing on that cliff. Very steep cliff. Uh, definitely sets the mood for this album of uh, themes of long journeys, space travel, um, the end, even the end of days. Um, you've got a great concept art of Eddie here, the new alien, alien version of Eddie. Got some really good concept art there. Some, uh, you got one that kind of looks a bit like Avatar. Um, then on the back, you've got a nice silhouette shot of the band. Really cool. Uh, 
overall, uh, with the exception of the Mission Edition being uh, la and lacking in the bonus features department. The music alone on this album, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. It's a phenomenal album. Uh, if you're a Maiden fan, check it out. Uh, this is also an album that, that's easily accessible for new Maiden fans, too. So, if you know somebody who's interested in Iron Maiden, um, have them try this out. It's uh, well at, uh, well accessed. I, I mean, even my mother likes this album, and that's a first. Um, so, 8.5 out of 10. Uh, leave feedback, comments, subscribe, whatever. Just, uh, you know, let me know what you guys think. Sub 668 here, signing off.